I'm <clears throat> totally delighted to be part of a very distinguished panel. Uh, everyone on the day surrounding me, they are acknowledged leaders and innovators in their own space. Very briefly, Dr. Abhijit Mitra, our Animal Husbandry Commissioner in the Department of Animal Husbandry and Daring, a very distinguished animal scientist with many papers and innovations to his name, and also a very skilled administrator who has managed major institutions uh, in his career and is now the senior most veterinarian in the nation. And we have uh, Madam Pooja Call. Madam Pooja Call is a young and innovative entrepreneur who is running a cosmetics company based on the very exclusive product, which is donkey milk. We have uh, Madam Jyoti Mishri, who has had a long and distinguished career within the ICAR and is now with the FAO, an animal health scientist of distinguished. Uh, Madam Anju Ajay Deshpande is an entrepreneur, a uh, senior businesswoman who leads the Siddhi Vinay poultry breeding farm and hatcheries from Pune. She has also had a long career in the government, so she brings to the table today varied experiences and knowledge that we hope to take advantage of. Madam Sridevi Kuntapalli, who leads Srija. Srija is uh, self-admittedly, it is the single largest woman-led organization or company in the world. It's a milk producer company, and it provides uh, six and a half liters, lakh liters of milk per day. Yes, per day. And it is uh, based in Tirupati. And uh, Dr. Vishwanath Sahu comes from a very unique organization within the ICR. It is the ICR Central Institute for Women in Agriculture and is based in Bhuvaneshwar. So we do not have too much time, so I would not like to further uh, take more time. Uh, I would invite uh, Madam Sridevi Kuntapalli for her presentation. Is a, yes, please, podium, yes. So I would request all speakers to uh, complete the presentations within five or seven minutes so that we have uh, enough time afterwards for discussions. So, we started our operations in Chittu districts of AP. Background of Srija. Chittu districts is mainly known for impressive livestock population. Majority members are small and marginal, that, mem that means having less than three animals due to prolonged drought and consequent crop failures, more farmers started keeping cows for their livelihood and were selling the milk to private dairies. Main sources income in milk products during that time to eliminate the middleman and exploitation by private dairies concept of Srija dairy conceived by, by NDDB and it was incorporated in July 14. Next, with the support of NDDB and NDS, we successfully completed the NDP-1 project and we are implementing Rasri Gokul mission with the support of DAHD, quality fodder speed production with the support of NLM and JICO project support of NDDB sales. Improved access to 
inputs for animal productivity enhancement, relations, rational balancing program, artificial insemination, mineral mixture, cattle feed, animal health management, reduced cost milk production. All our producer directors. Participation in governance. Management runs by company by adopting policy governance. Enablement through capacity building. We continually co conduct training programs to our directors and awareness programs. Leveraging the SSG network, majority of the members are SSG members who benefit by becoming members of Srija, which gives the opportunity to occupy the leadership positions in the board. Presence of women in entire dairy value chain members, board of directors, Palamitra, field functionaries. There are lot of success stories, few among them, few are Shoba who has 8 acres of land without water and other means out her income was very poor. And she purchased a cow, become a member of Srija and at present she has 10 cows and 2 buffaloes of happiness. Another story of my co-member in the board, Mrs. Thayaramma, first she selected as a VCJ and MRG member. Later, she attended the leadership development program where she learned how to feel and act in empowered manner. We recently we received innovation award issued by IDF at Chicago and we also received from NDDB and SAP, Hibis TV award, Young Dairy Farmer award, steps to 10th year ma'am. I am to 10th year. <laughs> this is idea of award recently we got Chicago. <laughs> one of this region, one of members. At present 1,20,000 members, happy milk producers and growing. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Devi ji. Such an inspiring and just the heart fills with pride, really, to see all those ladies in that boardroom conducting the board meeting. That was a happy moment. Thank you so much. I now invite Dr. Sahu for his presentation, please. Good morning, everybody, uh, respected chairpersons, and uh, our panelists and audience. Uh, I am uh, Vishwanath Sahu from Central Institute from, uh, for Women in Agriculture. Earlier, was, uh, I, I was at uh, Indian Veterinary Research Institute, and Sar was my senior. When he was there, I was, uh, I was there. And uh, I have some uh, keen interest uh, for uh, serving to the uh, uh, community farming community, especially farm women. So that's why I was transferred to women in agriculture. So coming to the topic, my topic is women transforming the dairy landscape, balancing leadership. Basically, I'm a nutritionist. You, everybody might be knowing that uh, more than 70 million of 147 billion Indian households that depend upon dairy sector. And the dairy sector is the uh, real uh, backbone of our country and most of the farm women they are involved in this dairy farming and more than 50 percent income is also contributed by this sector about 75 percent but mostly the farm, uh, farmers are small marginal 
and landless milk producer having 2 to 6 uh, 2 to 8 animals. And uh, in case of if you think just uh, leadership and uh, women empowerment, we have to think in that aspect for uh, uh, empowerment, empowering this uh, farm women who are uh, living in the below poverty line or smaller marginal farm holder. And this is the data you might be knowing. We are self-sufficient in per capita availability of milk. Then our milk production, if you compare 1950 to uh, this year, its enormous growth has been obtained. But uh, can you uh, mm -hmm. think that our uh, these poor farmers, they avail the required amount of milk? Certainly not. So that's why women empowerment who are actually involved in, in the dairy farming, they should be empowered. Their leadership should be developed. And the major uh, constant is the feed and fodder uh, availability. Earlier it was there, 50 years back it was there, still it is continued and even uh, after, after 20, 30 years it will, be uh, it will be also continued. So we have to think in uh, uh, feed fodder availability because that is the major constant uh, we are working in field and uh, if you just uh, see this slide, women's contribution in dairying and this was uh, our honorable prime minister, he has uh, elaborated that these farm women are the real leaders of Indian dairy sector and more than 70 percent work is contributed by them and more than one third members of dairy cooperatives in Indian are exclusively by women. And definitely it is uh, needless to say that uh, the sustainable development goal to uh, two and five that will be met out if, if the farm women are empowered in uh, dairy farming. Uh, one thing I would uh, highlight that uh, women helps women and support communities. This unlike men, that is their extra uh, additional characteristic that uh, they help uh, from their heart uh, to their um, uh, women community. And uh, this is, a, of course, a daring is a proven technology for socio-economic empowerment of women and leadership quality development is the need of the hour. Because most of the uh, farm women, they are working, they are working hard and smart work also, but leadership quality is lacking. That we'll discuss in the house today. And women inclusive cooperatives and farmer producer organization. Earlier it was a self-help group and now it is being uh, emphasized upon this farmer producer organization, particularly women farmer producer organization. And uh, if you see the cooperatives, cooperatives, uh, these women led cooperatives in Gujarat, Rajasthan, it is highly developed, developed. But in other states, why not? That means something is lacking. Uh, thanks to our uh, Dr. Varghese Korean, he has uh, rea uh, really built the women empowerment, women leadership. But it should be percolated to other states also. Then uh, I'm just citing one example that Basundara Mill Cooperative, and it has the highest number of women mill cooperatives, you might be knowing, in Gujarat state, with uh, 1238 uh, and eight women board of directors. It is really a, a praiseworthy statement. Then actually, if you just, uh, what are the activities the, and how you can uh, mainstream in gender perspective, particularly in dairy farming? First thing, we have to think what are the activities, how it is controlled. How, uh, to what extent they are involved. This is our research in our institute, but of course it is our unique institute we are working in that aspect. In livestock sector, the contribution of women is much higher. That is 40.8 percent, this is our research, Dr. Anil Kumar and myself who are working. And in crop sector, this is latest uh, data uh, based on the time use study of 2009. And uh, in crop sector, it is 27.2 percent. And women invest at least five hours we have, we have uh, analyzed the time motion study through uh, video camera like that. And then women, women, they work at least five hours, five hours in different dairy, dairy farm activities. But they, they, they are working, you can, you can just uh, go through this uh, slide that in grazing, feeding, care of kids, cleaning and milking, uh, their contribution is much more. Uh, as compared to this health care, breeding, sale purchase, and it is mainly controlled by the men. But it should be, the war should be mainstream in gender perspective. First thing is access to control and access to, and, uh, to various input resource and technology, then control over resource also. Then that is uh, control over the asset also. Then, uh, then second thing is gender rule, dairy management. Of course, most of the activity, the managemental activity is governed by the farm women. But uh, it should be uh, thought in 
gender perspective. Then economic, cultural, social needs, that should, that should be respected, due respect should be given to that aspect. Then division of labor and specific needs. And in, uh, if all these uh, uh, factors amalgamated, then definitely will go for gender mainstreaming and dairy farming. So if you just uh, discuss in the women empowerment, I was just uh, discussing, first thing uh, is awareness development. Most of the farm women, they are not aware about the latest technology, even if the old technology also. They, they, they don't know in, in case of breeding, in case of feeding, breeding, management. They, even uh, most of the people, they are not uh, ready to accept also. So adoption, acceptance and adoption is also very important in our training uh, in the social dimension, gender dimension. We have to think in that aspect how they can be, a uh, proper awareness can be developed. Then we are, we are giving capacity building. Here I would, I would like to highlight, highlight that when you go for the training, the skill-based capacity building uh, program should be there. What is need-based? That should be need-based. Then active participation is also required. Most of the farm women, they are not uh, uh, participating uh, actively because some gender barriers are there. Then decision-making power. Decision-making power is not a one-day activity. Uh, it will, gradually it will be developed. Then control and transformation of actions. Uh, once they are uh, empowered in decision-making, they definitely the transformation of leaders will, will be there. Then, women empowerment through dairy industry. And in a, a better sense, I can highlight that access to resource and uh, technology, which are uh, uh, really uh, latest technology in dairy farming. Then, of course, in dairy farming, uh, as compared to the other, other activities, goat, uh, goat farming, sheep farming, yeah, other uh, animal farming activities, revenue generation is better. It's a long-term process. Then, education and health. If you see just, uh, just uh, compare men and women, particularly the income generated by the farm women that is, that is diverted for education of children and health also. But it's not, uh, in, uh, not uh, like uh, in uh, men. Then skill development and training is required. Then encouraging women to join cooperatives. We are just uh, highlighting, uh, particularly farm women, they are, they are just producing milk and selling the milk. But by producing and selling milk, uh, uh, money uh, revenue generation cannot be much more. So value addition and processing, value addition and marketing, uh, particular skill-based uh, marketing should be there. And they should be uh, uh, involved in uh, these cooperatives and self-help groups. Then social empowerment and recognition and entrepreneurial leadership. And in, in this aspect, we can just, um, uh, farm women can be empowered. Sometimes uh, we, we need, the, you might be knowing that leadership in dairy farming. And we have seen uh, since our uh, five to 10 years of research, particularly working with the farm women, the uh, submission, uh, submission to, uh, to the mission, submission means uh, submit to the mission. They don't, they don't have, that's why the education is required. Uh, then they should be uh, leadership quality, they, they should be creative and imaginative. There's a, there should be some flexible and adaptable nature. Then positive attitude should be also there. Then some innovation. Of course, most of the farm women nowadays, they are, they, they, they are involved in so development of so many IT cases. Innovativeness is also required. And their technology, we should, we should praise, we should uh, uh, accept their technology also, if it is uh, particularly feasible and uh, socially um, feasible and practical viable. Then determined to take risk. Risk bearing capacity should be also there. Then that should be goal oriented also. The farm women, they are working, hard work is there, smart work is there, but that should be goal oriented. Then experience, experience also required. Experience is not a one day work, it, it, it takes time. Then problem solving attitude, confident and leadership. And if they are involved in all these activities, then definitely uh, this leadership will be developed. And one thing that is mentorship. We have seen most of the people, uh, uh, they, are not, uh, they, are, uh, they don't impart their mentorship. And the farm women, even the farmers, they are also uh, not preparing their mentors. They should be submitted to the mentors. Then major constraints uh, we uh, used to find that uh, I was discussing uh, uh, today, access to input resource. So many te technologies are there, even they know the, the, uh, the feed, fodder, breeding, management, everything they know, but access is poor. Some uh, more or less they are, they are facing some constraints. It may be related to genders, it may be related to some uh, financial crisis, so many things are there. Then technical information also, 
then ownership of ownership to livestock livestock then uh, of course we can we can relate the land rights also nowadays uh, the land rights is a major problem most of the farm women they they don't have land in their name and in odisha i would like to highlight that um, if a um, farmer farm farm woman uh, is interested for this uh, avail availing the scheme availing the credit from bank then uh, her husband has to give in lease plot uh, taking taking 500 rupees that cost so <laughs> i think we should not go for the, in that aspect the uh, the land rights should be that should be given to the farm woman then training credit marketing facility these are very uh, poor uh, these are the major constraint then need based training i was highlighting that need based training should be there that production to marketing value addition is there value addition processing and you can say that is value chain from production to marketing in each step there should be value addition and uh, training in that aspect skill based training in that aspect is re required and another thing i would like uh, like to highlight in every training every program gender synergy should be there gender syn synergy means the active cooperation of male and female uh, what what we have seen in most cases the farm women they are they are just imparted training but in absence of their Uh, husbands but uh, when they go for the decision making power then the poor decision making power is reflected in uh, in accessing the uh, scheme in accessing the credit everything so in that aspect gender synergy we are highlighting then uh, of course sari is there uh, madam is here no specific scheme designated for empowerment in department of animal husbandry so many schemes are there Be people are availing many schemes many program many policy issues are there but there is no specific scheme that is de de designated for empowerment of farm women and we have always emphasizing providing benefits to them only uh, of course no specific fund is also given to the uh, farm women but it is advised it is enshrined in the in the annual report and everything only 30% budget can be utilized even people what what they do they they, they are getting 30% um, farm women for their training only 30% budget is utilized but uh, if it is restricted then uh, we may not go for the empowerment then lack of availing hassle free bank loans of course i need not uh, to highlight here uh, uh, when they avail the bank loans from nabard from any other banks that land rights and other problem problems some social barriers are also there they they really face the problems then women's low representation in every training in each and every case uh the uh, of course this in patriarchal family uh, family patriarchal society the male are dominated you everybody might be knowing but uh, in every training and capacity building program and uh, in uh, any case you can see low representation representation of this uh, farm women uh, in that case if you just for, uh, foster women formal participation active participation i am not taking simple participation active participation and decision making power that will develop then balancing women leadership okay so uh, if you th uh, think for the balancing leadership uh, um, uh, leadership uh, in the in this case psychological economic social and cultural aspect we have to think uh, for development of leadership and we are involved in this uh, dairy farming system model we are uh, working in convergence mode with the state uh, veterinary department milk cooperatives then uh, this women farmer producer ssg and then uh, state university kbks and our main aim is to access to resource technology development access to technology reducing the vulnerability stress reduction and drudgery reduction in four cases if in if it is fulfilled then definitely the value chain will be uh, value chain in dairy farming will be uh, better and uh, that will give the output and uh, outcome that is improve productivity enhancing the income and nutrition enhancing the skill then decision making power ultimately you can go for this women empowerment so you might be knowing i need not to highlight here the uh, what are the barriers of women leadership uh, some family responsibilities are there for farm women still then they are they are, they are just uh, assigned the work for uh, for dairy farming so in that we have, we have to think then uh, exposure to decision making is lacking then some few role models of women are there mentor need to be highlighted then men are not socialized in promoting women leadership that is very important men are not socialized for promoting this women leadership then actually there is lack of organizational gender equity policy and program in every scheme and program uh, you might be knowing very well then leadership skill is also lacking if they are exposed 
properly then definitely it will be uh, leadership quality will be developed and this is uh, transformation uh, transformational leadership one leader should have followers until and unless he or she is having followers then he cannot be considered as leader then uh, this is uh, when women form groups in a deeper sense they he see a need a mentor not a competitor and sponsor we have to sponsor and promote women because they have enormous capacity for their leadership but then they need to be encouraged in each and every aspect then educate and women empowerment is also uh, there so uh, i'm going to the last slide uh, periodically it should be assessed as a leader and uh, the performance assessment in that case work analysis is there and uh, definitely a leader should have dream and a goal should be there that is smart specific measurable and uh, attainable realistic and time bound if the goal is set then definitely the farm women can have the leadership and empower just this is for example and then attitude is everything if the positive attitude she is having then definitely she will be a leader and empower and this attitude each and it, it, it contributes uh, uh, this much mark i will together it will sum up then it will be 100 percent thanks thank you so much uh, dr sahu it's uh, wonderful to see the amount of thought that has gone into these slides and also the data that came out in the time you study is extremely right. useful and i think we will directly use that in our policy building right. now that was really helpful thank you so much I now invite uh, Madam Anju Deshpande for her uh, presentation, and I'm sure she'll have a lot to say on the points that Dr. Sahu has brought out in his presentation, since I'm sure she has, uh, with her own experience, she has learned exactly how to deal with those issues. So we'd love to hear from you, ma'am. Hello, good morning, everybody. And I am Dr. Anju Deshpande. I am this next presentation. Presentation you are not uh, given. Presentation diya tha na. Madam ko WhatsApp pe diya tha. Anyway, then I will speak just like this. WhatsApp pe diya tha. WhatsApp pe diya tha. Good evening. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Pooja Kaul, and I'm the founder of a social enterprise called Organico Beautifying Life, a very, very, very innovative venture. I started during my master's degree. And uh, right now, we are working in uh, Uttar Pradesh, uh, working with the donkey owners community. So basically, the story it starts when I was pursuing my master in social entrepreneurship, and I read, accidentally read an article about Switzerland based ladies selling donkey milk to infant. And that time I realized that uh, why not do something like this in India with a social aspect. Here in India, I don't have to buy donkeys or open donkey farm. I can just collaborate with the people, marginalized community, tribal nomadic community, who are already having donkeys working at construction sites and bricklins. So the, the people uh, who own donkeys, they are basically tribal communities in India who are at uh, working at construction bricklins, earning 200 to maximum of 500 rupees per day, that to be working 
for 14 to 13 hours. Uh, that time I realized they have this uh, golden bird with them, that is donkey, but they are not able to utilize that, uh, you know, that resources to the fullest. Donkey milk uh, price starts in India from 2,000 rupees a liter. Now it has jumped to 3,000, 5,000 in South India and in Gujarat, if you know. And uh, it is known for basically natural anti-aging properties. It contains retinol naturally, antioxidant properties naturally, which is very, very good for the skin allergies, skin related issues like pigmentation, hyperpigmentation, uh, wrinkles. At the same time, donkey milk is good for the people with lactose intolerant. People who are allergic to cow buffalo milk, they can consume it. In past, when children were born, their mother would go to the so donkey ka dood as a substitute milk diya jata tha. And there are proven researches also that donkey milk is equivalent to mother's milk. And a new livestock may add on hai, uh, donkey ko itna jada recognition we do not give in our country. Uh, donkey milk ko ya donkey ko livestock may itna jada recognition we not give. Uh, right now and uh, Organico's uh, motive is to provide livelihood at the same time give recognition to donkey in our company. The population of donkey has decreased by 62% according to the life, uh, last livestock census. Right now in India 1,20,000 donkeys are only and if we do not take any action, if we do not think about them, otherwise in next five years donkey we will read in books, in books, it will become a kind of animal, a kind of animal that we will see that we will see. And I am 100% sure that if I ask that when was the last time you saw a donkey on road, I am 100% sure that not many people can answer because the population has decreased. We don't have donkeys right now in cities you it's rare to see sit the donkeys on cities so we uh, thought to add value to donkey milk so when I started I thought I will sell donkey milk to the people but in India donkey consider a taboo and removing the taboo from this country is little difficult very hard to do it so we came up with the plan we let's uh, ask people to use uh, no use donkey milk for the external purpose and we introduced a brand called Organico back in 2018 uh, as a social uh, pilot venture I would say uh, we made uh, donkey milk products beauty products basically for the people who's going through the skin allergies, skin issues, and launched, uh, you know, it's launched a D2C brand, Organico. Uh, these are a few products we have already do selling, and the face pack made all made of donkey milk, uh, pure donkey milk. So the impact we saw uh, during, you know, you know, earlier the people who used to own donkeys, they used to leave donkeys on road after the four or five months of working with them. Ek bar monsoon aajata tha, to donkey ka jo use hai, itna jada ho nahi paata tha. And now we see that they have built a tin shelter, the, you know, construct kar diya unhone. They are providing proper feeding to their donkeys, the water. At the same time, we introduce a micro-entrepreneurship model in communities where we ask the women of same community to participate in milking of donkeys so that female and male both donkeys can be utilized of course the milk can be given by the female donkeys what about the male population of donkeys and what say look kya karenge so we thought why not ask women to participate and uh, donkey milk may wo uh, donkey uh, female donkey ko rear kare at the same time male the male of the family can take male donkeys to construction sites and bricklings and waha pe utilize kare so in that way both the male and female of the family can contribute to the household income currently uh, Last one year after COVID, we restarted our this micro entrepreneurship model. And right now uh, in India, we have educated to 30 million people through our digital campaign, through our social media, telling people about the utilization of donkey milk and how women can be a part of this uh, revolution. So uh, there are many researches also which has proven that donkey milk can be uh, is a super food, pharma food of the future. Uh, apart from this uh, skincare brand, we are also now doing research and developing nutraceutical, developing immunity booster uh, made of donkey milk, which will be beneficial for many people with low immunity. And in COVID, during COVID time also, donkey milk has a different uh, perspective ko mila hai society ke andar, India ke andar in, in mainly. Uh, south may uh, the price jumped to seven thousand rupees a liter because immunity booster ka kaam kar raha tha logo ko jo allergies thi jo problems aari thi usme donkey milk bahut jyada beneficial tha and there's a research uh, by China, university of agriculture china they have mentioned that donkey milk is very very beneficial uh, lung cancer mein jo it apne aap mein different uh, research ho jata hai and but yeah in uh, our country the research we have very few researches and not many people are about the benefit of these uh, product the resource we already have in have and uh, even in uh, 
history there are significance there are mention of donkey mill plus sanskrit mein hamare ek granth hai uh, usme bhi donkey mill ko as a beauty treatment as a skin treatment ke naam pe mention kiya gaya hai so aisa nahi ki uh, you know foreign countries usko use kar rahi hai ya fir egypt aur france mein hi use ho raha hai india mein bhi iske significance maujood hai Uh, we are a D2C platform. We are doing through our all uh, online. If I talk about impact in last one and half year, we have uh, educated around 30 million uh, people. Uh, this is like not updated, sorry. And uh, plus 100 plus families we are right now associated with working in Uttar Pradesh, Delhi, and Sia. Those people who working at construction Brickland or as a they are mainly Dhobi, uh, Kumhar, who in their past donkeys in Bharat, in our country, me hota hai. Plus we have now working with 50 women who are also associated with our production unit. To, we have trained them to make the beauty and skin care products. Uh, yeah so indirectly we say uh, when we started this uh, revolution it was very very difficult for us to mobilize the community when we used to enter the community rural areas and tell people that we want to we want to buy donkey milk they used to think that we will do some black magic we will buy donkey milk and their donkeys will die so that kind of perception we have changed in our country now people uh, who were very uh, shy to sell donkey milk in early now they are very proud because they are getting a minimum of 15000 rupees a month which was a earlier it was around 8000 or 7000 they were getting monthly income so it has jumped like twice it has jumped and they are very very proud and in fact uh, in one of the community i remember so earlier i was doing this project in solapur maharashtra when i entered the delhi uh, my family wanted me to move to uh, you know like this uh, city and being a girl in india there are restrictions you be all know and when i entered the community when we entered the community uh, so when i was telling people to sell donkey milk they were very like shy unko bahut hichak thi unko mujhse ye kaha gaya tha ki hum aapko donkey milk bech denge but make sure ki kisi aur ko na pata chale wo mazak banayega and trust me that person who said bbc covered a news bbc made a documentary on that person and he proudly showed that he milked donkey Uh, to support their livelihood support his family livelihood so the perception the point of view of people we have uh, or through organic or change recently i was reading a research paper where it is mentioned that in 2017 we created started this revolution uh, educating education of don no, educating people right now 148 donkey farms are in uh, india mainly in southern part of india where people are ready to sell donkey milk we receive 30 to 40 emails every day where we people are looking for vendors to sell donkey milk so uh, and uh, mainly uh, the one surprising part i have seen that women are coming into this you know and th that is one of the biggest achievement for us and i have like you know we are getting like emails and calls from the women entrepreneur from south india who wants to sell donkey milk and open their own farm and i know like such 10 women who have already started their farm in south and andhra pradesh mainly so if i talk about the uh, recognition uh, Uh, in india it is very new uh, we are getting recognition still waiting for to get that uh, you know recognition but in uh, for talk about the western country even in egypt in greece uh, in european country donkey milk is one of the trending right ingredient right now in skin care sector in pharmaceutical sector people are using it people are consuming it and in korea uh, after the snail mucus donkey milk is one of the trending uh, skin care ingredient abhi india mein bahut efforts lagne hain bahut sare researches hame करने बाकी है जो कि डोंकी मिल को प्रमोट कर सकता है एंड ट्रस्ट में दिस कुड ओपन अ न्यू लाइन ऑफ इकोनॉमिक लाइवलीहुड फॉर अदर पीपल द अल्टरनेटिव लाइवलीहुड लाइन ऑफ लाइवलीहुड फॉर द पीपल हु आर एट ग्राउंड लेवल्स बिकॉज डोंकीज आर बेसिकली मेनली ओन इन इंडिया बाय द मार्जनाइज कम्युनिटी ट्राइबल और द नोमैटिक कम्युनिटी एंड इट इज गुड फॉर दैम दैट दे विल गेट एक डिफरेंट परसेप्शन एक डिफरेंट लाइवलीहुड एक ऐसी चीज से जो अनएक्सप्लोर्ड था अनरेकोगनाइज था कंट्री के अंदर वी वर ऑल्सो गॉट listed in forbes 30 under 30 asia for this innovation in social entrepreneur category and received princess diana award from united kingdom and msme women emerging women entrepreneur award last year so it is definitely uh, you know motivation and also we are trying uh, to uh, educate people and do something and it is so honor to uh, share this stage with extreme and expertise guest and my mentor avijit sir so thank you so much Thank you so much, Pooja. What an interesting subject, and we all learned so much from this presentation. Uh, if uh, Dr. Anju's presentation is on, can we invite her now, Anand? Yes, ma'am. Is there? Please.
Thank you. So good morning, everybody. And uh, I am Dr. Anju Deshpande. Um, I am from Siddhi Vinayak Poultry Breeding Farm and uh, Hatcheries Private Limited. And I'm talking, I'm going to talk today about uh, my newer, like a re more recent company, Percept Acuity. This is the vision which I uh, share with you. The markets are volatile. Animal husbandry markets, any market, whether it is poultry or dairy, they are very volatile. So the products are perishable. So we have to strive to be competitive and ensure that profits are there, that so the profits can be shared by uh, the company with the farmers. So we are attached to 450 farmers. Sorry. We are attached to 450 farmers. And while working with this farmer, one thing I understood is we have to constantly keep changing and keeping the vision in mind, we have to ensure that innovation has to be done. So this is the innovative approach which we took in Siddhivinayak Poultry Breeding Farm. My mission here was to cut the losses and increase the profitability in the farming because livestock sector is challenging not only in India but everywhere in the world. It is a very challenging field and very few companies do keep uh, progressing and growing over the year, over the decades. We have seen many poultry farmers in India who perished in the time of bird flu, in the time of um, COVID. So our struggle was to keep surviving. So for livestock operation to survive, the produce should be Production should go on without the constraint of whatever uh, challenges are there, financial or physical. So this Percept Acuity Technosoft, I brought this and our clients are Siddhi Vinayak Poultry Breeding and Avian Research Development and Private Limited. So these are my main work strategies. In this, what I thought is to keep the productivity and to increase the profit year by year, we have to need uh, have our, our own data to fall back on. If we have data, then we can make decisions. So I am very proud to say that after the inception of this company and providing the data by digitizing all the uh, things, the operations which we are doing, by doing that we reached from in 2015, we were 100 crore company. Now we are 600 crore company, sir. And this is the only innovation which we are depending on. And we, from 150 farmers, 150 farmers, we have reached to 450 farmers by digitizing it. So what we have I did is in-house a poultry software. In animal husbandry, there isn't any software or technology leverage. Usually, they don't take any leverage. So um, I, being a veterinarian, I thought, why only to work in science field? Let me collaborate with some engineers, software engineers, where, where software engineers are providing services to other country. Why not our software engineers can work for us? So these are the technologies we are using in back end and front end. So our <coughs> ERP and the software is mobile friendly. It is. Uh, laptop friendly and we get real time data from our own farms. So this is kind of, I'm sharing the login page where uh, with different operations, we can just enter the operation under the company name and we can directly land in on the page where we want. These are some input forms. The input forms are very simple, which we usually, all the Indians use just like in railway uh, ticketing or buy, to buy an air ticket. So we have kept the everything very simple. So the presentation is also very simple, but the impact of the present, this uh, software is so much that we can work from anywhere. I can work from Delhi. I'm here for two days and the main uh, workforce, he is right now in the Europe. So he can assess the real time data. And these are the input forms we have some seven branches around Pune in 500 kilometers uh, distance. 
and all the input from the farmers data every day they are doing those input forms filling the input form from the uh, rural area we have 500 people working for us sir and all these people on the uh, payroll other support uh, support system and other things are different but pay on payroll we have 500 people the 500 people use the input things and all the inputs they do small inputs today i visited the farm feed was given the medicine was given the uh, what is the bird's health the pictures were taken even the pm post mortem pictures are taken and uh, filled in this such input form these are like one sector only i have given uh, this uh, shown this input form like uh, from um, purchase orders we have to give purchase orders hundreds of purchase orders are given in one month and what is the status what is what were the rate decided of the ingredient free ingredient everything all input has been done uh, by uh, people and we get the reports i'll show you some reports these are the input forms one this is actual production what is the production what is the size of the bird what is the weight of the bird and uh, each flock 450 farmers each flock what is the health of it all production and performance data is uh, shared on this input form so we get reports so these are the purchase or i shared you the input format of uh, purchase these are the purchase order report so whatever reports are there what is the condition of report today that the delivery is being done or not or uh, what are the price fixed everything can be seen in the office through this this is GRN report whether the feed was analyzed in laboratory what was the condition we do the analysis of each and every ingredient that is through NRI technology and uh, after the testing the ingredient only we do the payments once the purchase order is completed we uh, give the PDF to uh, the, all these operations are handled due nicely due to this software so we get every day we can get the excel report what are the uh, um, uh, age of bird age of flock what is the weight of the bird how they are improving how many grams they have put on and when the bird is ready we come to know in the uh, office itself and we can plan the sales as well as we can plan the purchase from office itself corporate office and this is something very critical which we need the data for the hatching egg cost every day the cost keep changing the hatching egg cost the broiler cost and um, uh, the chick cost all three things keeps changing besides that feed cost keeps changing so we get this kind of analytical data and all this uh, is done in house so uh, we are right now we are working for poultry sector but i would like to enter other livestock sector because livestock farming is similar everywhere the whatever um, feed is being given management is being done and then uh, treatment or the um, supplementation part is there then keen observation is needed to do all this we need technologies technology is very must for woman entrepreneur to take the leverage of technology for any entrepreneur it is good but for women it is very beneficial now i can see everything sitting in my office we ne i need not travel initially i used to me and my husband used to travel for 200 kilometers to 300 kilometers per day uh, just to go, uh, visit multiple farm and come back but now we can see due to technology we can see everything in our own office and uh, do the things that's how we improved and we grew we are the fastest growing company in maharashtra in poultry and we survived to bird flu and covid of course so and uh, this is not a funded company we have uh, we started with zero funding and uh, we put our own money and uh, now we have reached some 600 crore uh, turnover thank you so much thank you so much dr anju that was uh, amazing to see how reasonably simple technical interventions are also so much required in this sector that a big business can be built out of it by just meticulous application of technology. And uh, I now request Dr. Abhijit Mitra for his presentation. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, very good morning to all of you. And I was just counting the numbers. Uh, it's very happy to see, ma'am, that in the uh, dais, 
uh, women are more, but in the audience, uh, miserably, women are very less. That's okay. uh, so then we need to yeah, like, so, <laughs> no, I just trying to find out that, uh, what to start. Anyway, uh, you know, when we talk about gender equity or equality or whatever you talk about, we have some perception, we have some data, we, we figure it out. Somehow we do good, somehow we do bad, but only one thing I want to tell, in the point number five, forget about other thing, in livestock sector, 70% of the workforce what we have, that is meant for women. You know, this is a, one of the favorite slide of me, when you talk about Indian livestock sector, you know, livestock ownership in India is a part of life, it is not just a business. Because every small livestock holder, they keep two to eight animals. One point, you know, kind of 70% rural livelihood, they depend on livestock. 43% of the workforce, they are women. They are mixed farming, like a crop and livestock. And the close intimacy between the livestock and the human interaction is so close, it's just like a one of the house members. So that also, this unique feature or the fabric of the small holding livestock make our livestock sector very unique and different from the anywhere, any part of the world. And if you see that typically we, the women spend around 294 minutes daily in a different dairy farm activities and average women spend around 17, 17, hours per year, that is, and in, with respect to 315 hours per year for men. So you can see the disparity in the number of, of workforce they do. And that is the typical picture, a woman with a few chicks. And in India, women contributes around 32% of the time in agriculture, which I think Saudi also told. Maybe data could be here and there, but what the main point is, the women spend more time in, in livestock sector. This is the I think just a repetition of one slide of Dr. Sahu, which clearly shows that what are the activity um, women take care, but if you see that majority of the activity where the number starts from above 80 to 90 percent, but the, when it comes to the health care of the animals, when it comes to the farm record maintenance, and very importantly when it comes to the credit, the women contribution become very less. And here is a point to be concerned. Uh, COVID has gone, but I, I just to reminder to all of us that our Secretary General of WHO, when I uh, sorry, even when he uh, gave that, uh, he just delivered this lecture just few months before the COVID came to this world. And he said that nature is angry. I'm not going to read it further. Why it is very important that all the health initiative or the transboundary diseases, genetic diseases, so I'm, it's, it's going to be very important. I'm just going to give a very specific example here. The, what we are going to talk about as the typical nature of our livestock sector in India or particularly this particular, this region where we follow the smallholder livestock system, the women, because their intimacy to the livestock rearing they are much more exposed to the disease threats. And the threat to the men and women are different. Just for example, if you remember the data of the COVID, you will find the men suffered more. There is a more death of men. That not because of the any other reason. There are two reasons. One of the more reasons is the men have been the more comorbidity factors, smoking, alcoholism, and other factors, they increase their death. I'll take two examples. One example from Africa, just to give you an example. Ebola is a disease which generally it's a kind of a hunting disease, like people acquire this disease when they go for hunting in the forest. So first time the men get the infection. So when outbreak sets in, the men are the main, main sufferer. But as the outbreak spreads further, women are become the more, much more sufferer, simply because they take care of their ill patient at the home. They become also health worker, midwife and staffs. So they become, it become a much more toll to them. So this kind of disparity and the differentiation has to be looked into. 
Second example is brucellosis. You know, in India, we run a disease control program. It causes abortion in human being as well as in animal. But when an animal is affected and women when they are pregnant, they become, there is a chance of getting infection more. There is abortion, stillbirth, and that not only cause child loss, but it also cause a mental health problem, other social taboo. So these are the few areas where one health approach is much more important, how we can take care of that. Another issue is antimicrobial resistance. You know, it is a, sing, it is a silent pandemic. There is a estimated 700,000 deaths and 10 million deaths will be there by 2050. And when it become a poor accessibility to the woman, it become much more important because women being less accessible to the healthcare system, they are suffer for getting contaminated water, contaminated food, with a in terms of antimicrobial resistance. Uh, don't uh, bother yourself to look, go into the whole slide. Just to the last one, the awareness generation. When it comes to the One Health, it has been always found that due to lack of awareness, the many a time the One Health operationalization become very difficult. For example, if you talk to a woman or a woman farmer that what are the threat you are perceiving, they will not be able to tell. They know there is some kind of a threat, but they will not be able to tell. Another problem is so there is a disease called listeriosis, which is a waterborne disease. So many women in a village setting, they are involved in carrying water or sourcing water. So they have a more time to spend with the water, getting the water, so they become much more prone to such, such thing. So the awareness, community engagement is one, one area. I will just create a three key word, access to education community and farm level engagement so that decision making process become more inclusive and of course awareness so that we know what we are doing. This is a kind of a, uh, I think uh, Shulekha is here, uh, you are pioneering this A help things and it is a one of the uh, prominent activity of course with the leadership of Barsaji, I am not, uh, but why it is very important you see more and more workforce we get create in the village setting, in the remote setting, where women are the front line agents, they not only become, become much more educated, they also can communicate the information deep into the family, because their penetration in the family is much more than a man. They can cross many barriers. So when you create one educated woman, you actually get educate 10 other men. If, if not the data, I am not getting wrong and that is true in my family too. Uh, so this A help, I am not going to tell detail about that. This is one of the initiative which will create a kind of a 1 lakh, 100,000, uh, no, 10, 100,000, I always put in lakh and million. So this workforce will be transform the whole livestock sector to deliver the not only veterinary health services, primary veterinary services, also of help in the operationalization of One Health Initiative. Uh, I'll skip this slide for a while. I'll, this is one of the slide and my last slide. 1910, Rovindranath Tagore, who wrote our national anthem, our national uh, poet, and where from I belong, my village is Santiniketan, where he set up the university, he wrote very specifically, whoever you left behind, he is going to pull you back from the back, from the behind. So it is the time, it is the time now, and now, and now, that we create a partnership, educate our the better hubs in such a way that it is not going to a journey alone. And I leave this with this thought, if we walk alone, our speed would be little more but our destiny may not be sure that whether I will reach to the destination. If we walk together, our speed may be little less, but one thing is sure that we will reach to our destination. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Mitra.
he brought out a totally different point which has not been discussed till now the importance at the field level when it comes to health issues and of course in general the importance of the woman livestock worker in the village i now welcome dr jyoti mishri for her talk Thank you very much for giving this opportunity to be here today, uh, esteemed members on the dais and my dear colleagues. Uh, so I'll be speaking a bit different from whatever the stories have been uh, shared by the previous speakers, and uh, because uh, I was uh, chairing the ICC for quite a long period at. Indian Council of Agricultural Research. Uh, so uh, I am very happy that uh, most of the uh, audience is <laughs> they are men, and I think uh, it is the men uh, who require more gender sensitization than uh, women. Thank you very much, <laughs> and I also uh, thank the chair of today's session, Dr. Varsha. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, so uh, I think this gender mainstreaming. This is a critical aspect where uh, we need to uh, acquire the gender equality uh, not only with respect to domination or something like that but in terms of the economic development also and uh, where we participate equally and at personal levels also. Uh, then, uh, as India is now progressing economically, also we see that uh, we have some uh, very real agendas where we need to uh, work more effectively, be it social, human development, and women empowerment also. And women empowerment doesn't mean that uh, we have to uh, make another gender or another uh, sex low, but it is that we need to be at par and. Everybody should recognize the participation of uh, both of them as Dr. Mitra has very well uh, cited that both need to collaborate and work together. Uh, so uh, there is a lot which is uh, required to be done at the uh, national perspective also and uh, our government is doing it but definitely what is the advocacy and implementation of those policies uh, they needs to be uh, checked. Uh, where we stand. Uh, so uh, advocating for women's and girls' role and the discriminatory practices which we are uh, facing and the hidden challenging agendas where we need to work upon, be it in terms of the inequality or in terms of the exclusion of the women or the girls uh, from certain decisions or being in certain streams. So those things, they need to be uh, worked upon uh, at all levels. So uh, journey towards women empowerment has its uh, highs. We have seen good points also, and we have seen definitely some of the uh, uh, lows also. Uh, even though uh, we have been uh, very, uh, uh, I think, pro and uh, proactive, in formulating domestic policies and regulations also, but how much it is implemented uh, actually uh, it needs to be seen and even though uh, we have come up with the clearance of the women reservation bill, but uh, how much it is implemented uh, it requires to be seen. Then uh, as per our constitution we have equal rights for men and women article 14 to 16 in the Indian Constitution and where the discrimination is strictly prohibited. And uh, we have seen that concerted efforts to ratify the international conventions also and uh, against discrimination against women have been there. And India was the founding member of ILO and it has ratified 47 conventions and one protocol also. Uh, we have seen that uh, in, uh, India signed the convention for elimination of all forms of discrimination against uh, women and it has yet to uh, but ratify the op uh, uh, optional protocol of the STAW and NAP on women, peace and security. Uh, we have seen the Dowry Pro uh, Prohibition Act and Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act 2005. Uh, it has been enacted 
uh, to criminalize instances of uh, dowry and domestic violence. Uh, but uh, women reservation bill has been cleared, but whether how and uh, it will be implemented needs to be seen. Uh, there has been a changed paradigm. Uh, for the last, uh, uh, I think, few years, where we have seen uh, women coming uh, 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 in the sectors of the business, politics, and we've seen some uh, success stories uh, today also, and they have made quite, um, I think, uh, enrolled in the uh, lunar space uh, sectors also, where the women were uh, directing and they were leading the uh, uh, this thing, this mission. And we have also seen how pilots and doctors and even in the um, in, in, uh, armed forces and defense sector also, they are coming up. But India's story on women empowerment is not complete without focusing on the grassroots initiatives adopted by government and civil society organization. Uh, even though the government has launched many, uh, I think, supportive schemes for women, uh, Rajki, uh, women, uh, I think, I, I have written those, uh, Mahila uh, <coughs> Ujwala Yojana, then uh, Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao, and uh, Mahila Heart, and then other uh, successful schemes also, and uh, we are working on it. I, uh, this uh, Indian woman, what are the now basic challenges uh, which are encountered in, the, in this uh, women empowerment uh, inequality, that is, uh, Indian uh, women make up merely 14% of the leadership roles. And Indian legal system is confronted with uh, gaps between policy and practice. And enforcement of the laws, they are weak. Uh, in, even though the Nirbhaya <coughs> Act has come up for security and uh, providing security to the women, and uh, there is a need for women empowerment in the rural India, where the population is around 65, 66% uh, around. The more concerted efforts are required to close the urban and rural divide and ensure that women in rural areas enjoy the same access to education, employment, health care, and decision making. The hardest challenge will be uh, to change attitudes. Uh, that's very important given that many barriers to women empowerment are attributed to patriarchal and uh, <coughs> traditions that are in, in the south, especially in the Indian scenario. So I think mainstreaming a gender perspective in the development process is important and building and strengthening partnerships with civil society, particularly women organizations. Then uh, what are the op operational strategies uh, which needs to be taken into perspective? Time-bound action plan, institutional mechanisms and resource management, legislation, gender sensitization, and uh, partnership with voluntary organizations and cooperation. Then uh, rights of women under constitutional law, uh, under family law, and under Muslim law, rights against violence and uh, indecency, and key NGOs which are working for the women rights, they need to be encouraged. Uh, so uh, these are some of the articles uh, which signify the importance and care taken to for uh, this uh, gender mainstreaming and uh, uh, make one woman equal today, a day. And uh, women are the, this has been said by Hillary, uh, women are the largest untapped reservoir of talent in the world and uh, we need to explore the, their talent also uh, because they have been better organizers, uh, organizers and we need to give them the space they require. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you so much, Dr. Mishri. That was a more global context for whatever we've been discussing uh, since the morning. So we are almost out of time and uh, can we take two, three minutes for questions, Suleka? Do we have time? So, uh, any questions from the audience? Uh, finance module, contract forming module. Each module took me six months to just have a basic thing. Later, uh, together, all together, we are working from 2017. And uh, last year, I was like, uh, both of us said, who are the prime uh, person uh, that okay, this is satisfactory and technically 
everything is in place. So, minor uh, updation and uh, changes we are doing. Uh, and we can customize it. Each module is separate and we integrate it. So, it took us five years. And one, actually two supplementary questions to that, if you allow. Yes, please. Uh, that are you selling, are you uh, into the poultry business only or you are selling the software as well? Yeah. Are you into the poultry business only or you pl ever plan to? Yeah, we are planning to diversify this. Uh, that's why we have kept uh, uh, companies separate and uh, all the things are separate. So, although we are serving sister institutes right now, I am looking forward to serve all the livestock sector. I, uh, my thoughts resonate with what um, Dr. Uh, uh, Sir Abhijit Sir uh, said that we have to reach to the um, grassroots level. And uh, we are ready to fly with this um, uh, poultry module, but I would like to work in dairy, customize small, small softwares also for uh, farmers. Uh, of any sector, like uh, dairy sector, whether it is for milk or other any other kind of farming. As she said that uh, Pooja Ko, like, uh, congratulate her to work with, uh, uh, even though she's not a veterinarian, but uh, management graduate she's working with. So my love is for the sector, it is for the industry. And my vision is for the industry. I want to work with this software for industry, however, I can help. And I want to keep the cost minimum because technology cost every farmer cannot afford. So I want to reach to the grass level. I, I'm trying for that. Thank you so much. Any other question, please, for any panelist? So there's no other question. Then I think I'd just like to ask a closing question to every panelist. That uh, what do you think the single biggest obstacle that you have overcome? to get where you are today? Yes. So, uh, being a woman entrepreneur, uh, that to be a woman, uh, you know, working in this uh, sector which is not recognized by the population or the society, uh, changing the mindset, changing the mindset that uh, young people can also do something in livestock sector. Young people can also think you know, out of box and secondly, uh, there's one more obstacle. Uh, still, I feel that we face. Uh, India is too much into technology. That is a good thing. But we, as I mentioned earlier also, we should not forget about the social innovations the young generation is doing and the people is doing. And we should support you know, social innovation as well, whether it is in the livestock sector or any other sector. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Madam uh, Sridevi. My question is the same. Which is the single biggest obstacle that you have overcome to reach this far? Sijalo total ga andaram mahila le untam me me board lo untam me me policies do decisions me me tis kuntam me struggle face chase in dente own asalu mahila accounts ante ne chala varku men's koncham again iste ka feel ayero kani me 2017 nunchi own individual accounts mahila accounts lo ne me accounts lo transfer chase to namu. Next, my challenging is marketing. Mm. My products marketing low sale chess kuned ma challenging. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Amarendra. Uh, I'm company secretary of Shrija Mahila Milk Producer Company. This is 120,000 women owners company. So, ma'am tells that uh, initial stage giving the membership to the women 
and transferring the amount to the bank account of the woman. That is the first stage they struggled at their home because all men are not agreeing to transfer the milk bill amount to the woman account in the family. So that is the first struggle. From that struggle to they reach the 120,000 women members, owners, not members, it is a owner's company. And uh, now they are facing the marketing. The biggest challenge is marketing because now they are collecting the milk, but selling the milk also is also a, is a big challenge to the present company. Thank you so much. And I'd like to ask the same question to Dr. Anju. What is the single biggest obstacle you've overcome to reach this far? Yes. The biggest obstacle, I, I will talk about smaller obstacles which uh, led me to the leading position. Uh, when I started working in poultry sector, what I found is most of the men won't take orders from me. And to make them give all the data which I required to ask them for any papers, extra papers or anything if I call them. If even the subordinate, my subordinate, if they call, they will get a good response. And when I will call, they will say, why my Adam is asking so many things? That was in the in initial stage. It was like 30 to 40 people working. And now we have 300 to 500 and now I insist that they should bring their um, better halves also for all the gatherings. They should tell what important work they are doing. And I have earned the respect step by step by putting the things in places, by putting the system which will help men to do their work. Their hands are free to work now because all the data is in their hand. All the managers which uh, initially had a problem to have me as a boss, but now they are uh, quite comfortable. So that is the hurdle I crossed. Right. I think that's the most primary challenge in overcoming yes, it. Then everything one. else is much Primary easier. one and yes. ongoing, yeah. So I think we should be wrapping up the session now. I hope all the audience and all the panelists found it as interesting and useful and educative as I have found it. And uh, there was a mention in the last slide about the 33% reservation, which is the latest and perhaps one of the biggest gender battles which have been uh, fought and it happened in the end because of a combination of I think three things went into that becoming a reality. First is the underground struggle, the ground up struggle which has happened to make it happen for the last 20-30 years. So it kept coming up to a certain level and it wasn't happening. The second thing is that of course there was the leadership which made it happen at all costs that single small piece was missing, so it was not happening and now it happened. The third, the third thing, apart from that, is that a time comes for a certain thing to become reality. So when that moment comes, then all the stars align, the leader is there, the people are ready, and things happen. So one must go on putting in the effort required to reach uh, the destination that we want to. And I think all our panelists are evidence of how they have managed to overcome their challenges and come this far. So I thank you all. Thank you very much for the session. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, today now, uh, now uh, we reached to the final session. Today we have a very good uh, session. We have covered, uh, it, it was a very wonderful session also. And we have covered all the stakeholders, right from the individual entrepreneur, uh, from uh, entrepreneurs, then companies, then government officials, the highest uh, government officials of the country, and from the international organization, FAO. So all the stakeholders are, we covered, and all the subjects like uh, the individual constraints and challenges they have faced and uh, to the legal provisions. So what I understood is that, see, we have all the chances, all the opportunities of women empowerment in our country. And only thing is that the women empowerment should come from within the individual, whether it is a woman, whether it is a woman or a man, the women empowerment should come, come from uh, within from our heart itself. So with this, uh, I will. Uh, uh, I would like to invite Varsha, Varsha Joshi, ma'am.
uh, additional secretary department of animal husbandry and uh, the moderator of this session to uh, give uh, memendo to Ma'am, respected Abhijit, uh, and I would invite Abhijit Mitra sir to receive memento from Varsha Joshi ma'am. Ma'am, along with the memento, we have uh, the uh, lunch coupon also. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Next, I would like to invite uh, Pooja. Pooja Kaul, the founder of Organic of Beautifying Life. Thank you. I would like to invite uh, Dr. Jodi Misri, ma'am, scientist from uh, FAO. Ma'am, thank you very much. We have a very good session uh, on gender mainstreaming. Now, we invite uh, 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 Dr. Anju Capri. She's the founder of Siddhivinayak Poultry Breeding Farm and Hatchery uh, Private Limited. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, I would like to invite Sri Devi Kundapalli, Chairperson, Srija Milk Producing Company. Thank you very much, ma'am. You are a very good example for empowerment, empowerment of women and uh, example for a, a motivator motivator for the women empowerment through the self-reliant dairy cooperatives. And I would like to invite uh, uh, Dr. Sahu, Dr. Vishwanath Sahu, principal scientist from ICR Institution for uh, Women in Agriculture. Ma'am, last but not least. <laughs> Now I request uh, Shulekha to hand over the momento to our Barsa Madam, Additional Secretary. Thank you all. Uh, thank you all the audience for your valuable time.